My name's Kat Orlando, and I started listening to music, uh, I'd say, I was about four years old and I got my first records that were 45s, so my aunt and uncles, several of them here, had uh, restaurants around the Detroit area and, uh, with jukeboxes, and my grandmother brought home uh, a couple 45s, and I was just mesmerized and fascinated, and uh, just them over and over again. One was Cast Your Fate to the Wind. Another one was uh, called uh, Raunchy. Those stand out in my mind because I wore them out. <laughs> so, and just over the years, uh, I had the radio going constantly. I just had this little transistor radio just pinned to my ear all the time. So um, music was a big part of my life, especially in the Detroit area with Motown and music Beatles and all that. So, uh, you know, I knew I wanted to sing, but I was also wondering, I, I figure I'm going to play some instrument, I don't know what it is. So I'm, I'm listening to Jethro Tull and, and uh, Herbie Mann, and then five years later I'm, uh, I'm in bands and I'm getting drowned out, so I, that's when I decided to pick up the sax. So I'm listening to Traffic and, um, and how rock, you know, is incorporating saxophone into, into rock, and, and then I would, was listening to Charlie Parker all these years. So um, over the years all that kind of formed uh, to, uh, you know, in, in my songwriting and how I perform on stage. Uh, this drummer that I was going out with at the time, he said, you know, pick up the sax to sing fingering. And uh, so I decided that's when I, when I moved away from Detroit, I rented a saxophone for $10 a month and I started making all kinds of crazy noises on it until I found George, who was my teacher for eight years. And he was a bebop guy, started me at square one and uh, just doing scales and arpeggios for hours and hours on end. So uh, had me listen to John Coltrane and Charlie Parker. I think that got my music somewhere. I just had a, a great group of people working on this project along with me, uh, starting out with uh, Maurice Perhanahead, heard on the, as a arranger and producer and he, uh, I was looking for somebody for quite a while and, and we, we hooked up uh, after I sat in over at PJ's Logger House and then uh, maybe about a year later I said, hey, I got these songs, come on, can we do something? And he uh, took these songs from where I had them to just another whole level. And he's also on guitar uh, on these tracks. So then I uh, brought in Ron Otis on drums and uh, who I've had on my two previous CDs. And um, Ron just did a fantastic job. I was just so uh, honored to have him on board in this project. Uh, on bass, I had, uh, had William Pope, who's also a co-writer on Should've, uh, Should've Known Better. And uh, just, just holding, down the, holding down the groove on all those songs. Uh, Larry. Larry Pino, my husband's on guitar as well on uh, the th uh, three tracks uh, out of the four. And uh, let me see. Oh, and then there's Joseph Ant Fiddler, uh, who I was uh, so happy. He happened to be in town, and Piranha uh, got him on the phone and got him over, uh, got him over to the studio. So I was absolutely thrilled about it. And then I brought in a horn section, and I was just like ecstatic. <laughs> so on trombone, I have uh, Bugs Beto, and on trumpet, Shane Tucker. And uh, to be working with horns again, actually to be doing the whole thing in a live studio situation uh, after many years was just a thrill for me to do that. Rust Belt and Royal Oak, it was just very cool. So Shoulda Known Better. That, that song came together uh, in, a, in a very short time. I had this Groove going on, and um, and I wrote the lyrics out, and then I got Piranha and William Pope on, on the song, and they just uh, you know added a bridge and, and all these really cool uh, riffs on there, and that one is just um, me reminiscing about back in the day when I uh, left Detroit. I wanted to get out of Detroit, and, and I was thinking, okay, I'm not going to move to New York. I'm not going to move to LA. I'm going to go to Denver.
now uh, Only One, that's uh, actually the whole song is called Only One I Need, and um, that's, uh, that song is to my husband, it's a love song, and uh, so I have, uh, after years of writing a lot of, uh, of angry, depressing songs, it's, it's, you know, I still have several songs that are happy and about love, and that's one of them, so. <laughs> Gotta have a love song. <laughs> and City for Sale, that is about um, Detroit, uh, or any major urban area for that matter. Uh, I wanted to write a really positive song about Detroit, and uh, and I really think there's a lot of really good things going on, uh, the revitalization of the city and everything. But this song is about how uh, a lot of big corporations, they come in and, and they do a lot of good things and then they, they pack it up and leave and then they just leave the neighborhood dry. And that's what City for Sale is about because uh, there's just so much more that could be done. So in the song, I'm, I'm hollering out, you know, hey D, you know, and I'm, I'm talking about Detroit, you know, come on, what are we going to do? Well, this is my town. Yeah, I don't live in Detroit, but this is where I grew up and this is still my town. This is our town. So the song Wait, I wrote that in my living room on this really dreary looking day. and it, It's a song about just feeling alone in your uh, opinions and views and I think maybe I probably just got myself away from the computer and we were like a couple weeks before the election and uh, I, you know it's just like this sort of an angry song, you know, uh, that uh, Am I the only one that feels this way, sort of a thing. But I'm also writing it from another point of view of, of maybe somebody else that, that feels isolated and, and, um, and, and ignored. So I, I kind of take that song from my own personal um, perspective and maybe somebody else's. Where did the fault come from? Well, I guess that's got to be, you know, all the Sly and the Family Stone and uh, uh, all the r and I listen to over the years, even, even Motown stuff and, and even the rock stuff that had R&B influences in it. Uh, I just thought that that's a part of me that hasn't been expressed yet. Everything that I've been doing uh, has been coming out more uh, a pop um, sort of form or maybe the rock has been coming out and this um, thanks to Piranha Head helped me get that funk out on, onto the Onto, I'm going to say tape. <laughs> I was always to say tape, but uh, yeah, help me put that out there. People asking me, so what do you, what style is your music? And and you just take all these these influences I've been talking about: R and B, soul, rock, pop, jazz, and, and I just I'm thinking from my point of view anyway. I put them all into one, and it comes out as me. But I also have some stories in there that people can relate to just everyday things and uh, I'm not a signed artist uh, I'm an independent artist uh, and uh, I think it's a great thing you just got to give give new music a chance and support uh, support the music don't you go too far